up the top there. All that bloody dense smoke, man. Up on the right side there, look. Dickhead. Do you know where he's lit it? You know what he's doing. You know what he's doing, Bob and Fish. You know what he's doing. He's burning all the evidence when he pulled them fucking logs out of there. That's what he's doing. Get these guns behind it, okay? You got the wines in all there. I think the logs from the top there. He's little from there. Looks like it's been Let's go and ring too. the forestry. See if they know nothing what's happening here. Because that's right on the edge of Little Wonder there, that's up in Buckrabendini State Forest. Yeah. Come on, Alpha, now don't get upset. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are you right there? Why yeah. has <laughs> well, he got a fucking dictate all the time? <laughs> No, don't get upset there now, it's right. That's, <laughs> just, it, that's just normal, natural fire. Yep. It'll grow yeah. back, that stuff. Even though he's ripping our logs off, the cheeky bastard. Well, he's fucking ripping everything else off. <laughs> <laughs> mm. The usual. Where is in the right to burn the state forest? State forest. That wind's coming up pretty badly. Oh yeah, you can see the bloody Wesley coming there. That's been going since last bloody night. And they're going lighter than I do like today. Fuck that. You'd have to be stopped, man. Zoom in on me, Scotty. We're about this fire up in the Macromedini Forest here. Pardon? Joby. Yes. And it's been burning for two days. Do you know about it? In the state forest. Yeah, it's up towards the top now. Send the crew down tomorrow. It's been burning for two days. Yeah, it's privately lit. It's been going for two days up in the Black Romandini State Forest. I live in the house, mate. I'm just a concerned citizen from here, okay? In the house. I'm, I'm asking you about that fire. What is this going to do about it? And how come he can, he can burn up in the state forest? Well, I've just seen him going up his side track and there's snig tracks along the road and everything, mate. Looks like he's been pulling logs out of there and all. Yeah, we don't know because you're not out here to see these things. <laughs> I look after all of us, all of Australia, me. It's, they reckon they know the fire's been lit. I said it's been lit for two days, and they're sending the sending the crew out tomorrow. I said it's been burning for two days, and send the crew out tomorrow. Snowy must have did the job with them, eh? And she said it's been privately lit. Well, now he's been on the job with him, see? Yeah. So you get a crew out here tomorrow? Um, <coughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, well, you know, there's people living up here, and if that Wesley winds pick up and get that going, who's responsible? Yeah, well, snow. That's the problem, yeah. Well, you know what back. I mean? They passed the back. We, we're just concerned about it. <laughs> It's not us, it's not us. Right oh, no, then. It's no, we be saying yeah, it's not me, know. it's them. <laughs> Can't say no nothing. <laughs> so what did they reckon? They're coming up tomorrow. They, but they said it, they knew it was lit. Well, they, they, they do they never, but that lad reckoned Snow informed them. I said, yeah, but it's burning up the top. And they said, well, Snow's burnt, it's supposed to light fires down the bottom. I said, yeah, well, how come it's burning up the top? And I said, the Wesley winds are going to pick up. And once they pick up, mate, we're gonna, it'll be too late tomorrow, I said. Send the crew out tomorrow. <laughs> can move 100 k's in a day, eh? More than that. That's just over the next valley and it burn the fucking valley. Oh, about 4 k's from here. Yeah, yeah, the next valley's, that's right, 4 k's up and over and that's it. Yep. 
But almost all my fires here, <laughs> my fires, almost all the fires that occur on state forests here are mankind. Dr. So Peter Royal from the Buckabind Indy Water Catchment Association. And he's interested, especially when I mentioned that clear fill in some areas, but he wants to speak to the forestry at this meeting as well. So he wants to have a meeting involving the Forestry Commission and the residents to discuss what is going on. And that's why I need to find out more information. Well, it seems like quite a few residents are interested anyway. The majority of the one I can find. So. Whether it's going to do anything or not is a question. It's one more pin in the voodoo doll, if you like, as well. Yeah, well, that's right. It's, uh, but we're going to have to. Uh, so they, the farmers are going to want a bit more than just, you know, they don't, they're not so concerned about the logging and things like that. Well, if you can show that the catchment will disappear completely and they won't even be able to pump up for their cows, maybe they'll be interested. Yeah. And a bit later on in the year, the cause will be a arson. It's evil people with matches and motorbikes. And, and motorbikes. When does but we can't the, stop them. Do you know when the fire ban comes in? Yeah, now. Now. I saw that last no, time. No. The, the bushfire danger period started in the Nambucca Valley last weekend. Mm -hmm. The argument that, well, it hasn't rained in a few years and that's why the springs has dried up would wash, except for the fact that Little Wonder hasn't is, washed up. It's still running there. Oh, well, so, that's right. And there's a lot of hydrological data which proves that, of course, if you log it, just changes the surface temperature of the soil and therefore the spring location and volume and all sorts of things as well. All right. Yeah, if you want data, you can throw it at them. Of course, what we're going to need. Okay. We've got the data to say that you're going to stop the creek up, all the farmers will say, well, no. Nah. The easiest way would be to take them on a field trip, show them a little wonder at the bottom, show them the spring Well, the bottom. Peter Royal knows about it. He said, he said I was speaking to him on the phone last night, he said he'd been up at uh, Mackay. He said, oh, you mean that creek that comes in at Mackay's Road? And I said, yes, that's where the water comes from. Yes, I know that. None comes out of Buckra, and he realises that. And he was also going on about people cutting all the trees down beside the creeks, and you could see the areas where they'd done the right thing and done the wrong thing and by where the water was. So. Oh, really good news. He's, you know, he knows what's going on. can go to do action at Maxville in the Maxville area at Little Wonder State uh, Little Wonder in the Mistake State Forest. You know market heads. Um, talk to that man with the video camera there. There's no point in ringing him because he won't be home. That, that's action that's happening right now. So you could probably get a lift up there tomorrow or something like that. That's that usually seems to happen. Eco terrorism. Yep. Eco-tourism, I think the term is. Well, maybe they're yeah, interchangeable.
good water. Mm. Quite sweet. Yeah, so much water in the air that the moss can survive just hanging there. Yeah, got him in that glass house losing that lake in the tent. Yeah. That's sort of water cresty sort of thing. Yeah, that is edible. That is. Mm, it's a bit nicer than the bigger ones. Mm. So this is the bottom of Little Wonder Creek too, where it's largely been trashed by cows. Yeah. But it's in the Crown Lease area. Cows are allowed up here occasionally. We'll just go up a bit further. Check it out. Looks like it's facing north. Sort of. Woo! It's crown, it's crown land that they lease out. Lease out to the nearby cow farmers, yeah, to yeah. run their cattle on occasionally. They'll lend crown land to you if you're showing that you're farming something out of it, won't they? Yeah, that's what's happened here for quite some time. Yeah. A lot of these crown leases, they're trying to revert <coughs> to freehold land as well. I'm going to disturb this beautiful image. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Shoot the dick, it's cold! <laughs> Hell! Hey, this is a ringwood tree, which uh, it's uh, got the flavour of the scent of anise or, or licorice. It's quite a mm. nice coloured tree, it really stands out. Almost extinct too. Only yeah. ever grew in these two valleys. Back how's your anisata? What do they taste like? Can you eat them? Oh yeah. Probably taste like fennel, wouldn't it? Oh yeah. A bit like fennel. Yeah, a bit like fennel. Yeah, that's fine. So. Yeah, they were almost all cut down because when the first loggers found them around here, they found that they were concentric rings of light and dark wood. The main oh. reason they're called ring wood. And they thought that they'd shear and shatter, so they just cut them all and left them. There's hardly any left. Years later they found that they in fact last for hundreds of years, it's pretty damn good timber. But fortunately they cop us back as well, they form a ring of trees around the central stump. Mm. This is it. It's raining, we're in the forest. And just up there they're going to log it all and it'll just ruin all the creeks we've been seeing. For now it's here. This is a ring of ringwood tree. <laughs> Dry as a bone in here? Absolutely. Time to climb up. Charming view. <laughs> Easy peasy, 150. This tiny little palm tree that looks like really it's only a few years old is in fact over 100 years old. Maybe, I'd say 150. Walking stick palm. They grow really slowly and that's how fragile this place is. These ringwoods here, some of the last ringwoods in the world, almost all of their habitats have been destroyed and taken over by cows. There's more ringwoods here than anywhere else.
Well, what is it? 12 megalitres per hectare Gross per year generated by old growth oh, no, forests. Mm. What's a megalitre well, of water worth? Are you in pain? Are you in pain? Right right now. I'm not even sure. But, um, you know, for a fact, you want to build um, houses on less than 200 acres that, and do all sorts of other things. You can't chop down trees willy nilly in the upper catchment. The Forestry Commission can. But the Forestry Commission can. It doesn't make sense. People are involved and are putting in a land claim for this area. The Environmental Impact Statement, EIS from a state to state forest, requires that undertakings of site-specific archaeological surveys, training of contractors to recognise sites and artefacts, and consultation with the local land councils. This has not happened. The local Barraville, the land council has asked for no logging to occur. They are yet to receive a ply from state funding. We're going to start a comedy and we'll go. We want a shack up there. We're going to build one there somewhere. Just having a little Richard's coming out and we'll go straight up to Little Wanda and have a look. Sounds great. You reckon they're in court too? And well, that's what Richard just told me. They said they're in court over this up here now. Over the land claim? Mm. Right. That comes through. We might need them for us. <laughs> So what's going plain? Just the old crown lease has been plain. A lot, man. All the whole department. Right up it, yeah. <coughs> Why not, man? It took him ten years to do what he's fucking done now up there. Mm. And he's like, he's, he's up, he's going up there. It's Trevor. This guy on the tractor, man. Oh, right. He's pushing his cattle up the Murray. little wonder. Yeah. And he's just slashing the sides of the riverbank, man, and just making more grass grow further up and up and up. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's got to be stopped, that's what I tell this fellow that comes out Thursday at 2 o'clock. Get him involved with the fucking forestry too. Oh, man, you've got to do it. Mm. Oh, that's if, right. if you don't do it now, another 10 later. years' time, there'll be nothing there. Oh, that's it. You know? <coughs> and plus, he's cutting the fucking trees up out of there. All right. You're seeing them. There's still slabs and corner posts and fence posts up there now. And from what we can tell, that's on the Crown lease, right? It is. He's, he's doing it's it on, on the Crown, crown lease, lease man. That's what I try to tell this fella. He said, no, it's not. It's an, I said, it's not. I said, it's over that side. I said, we was there. I said, that's why you've got to come up there and have a look. He's got no lease to clear, the, to clear the grass away from the rivers and no lease to cut the trees down up there. You know? I mean, there's slabs here from here to that table long man up there. You know? We see him. He's got to stop him. He's got a dump up there as well. Yeah. Dump where he dumps very dumb all the old chemicals, and all his old uh, drums of chemicals and things. He dumped them in one of the creeks up there and oh, one of the side gullies and all the old drums, they're all rusted. So that's out. inside the state forest, see? So it's got to be a cat, it's got yeah, to be it goes a to there, there, round over there. Yeah, we're well, inside and he's still yeah. fucking around with it. So we're standing where in here? Yeah. We're standing right there. Near the boundary. Yeah, near that the boundary's about 100, road, 150 yards yeah. up ahead of us. Just back in that little dirt track on the map there. But it is in the forest according to the, the map. So, you know, it's definitely a, a forestry block that's been cleared for cattle grazing. He comes in here and he sprays Roundup, Tractor. Obviously a bit of clearing in the past, but I mean, it's really hard to pin that on any individual now, eh? Except for all of this regular clearing that's still going on. Definitely. I think it's older than that. It's not a habitat tree. Oh, it's a habitat tree. Look up the top. Yeah. How good is it, man? It's yeah, beautiful, man. Yeah, he's got pockets. He slashed all this. Yeah. Him, fella, yeah, on the tractor. Round up, too. Round up for the last few years. Who knows what before that? He's a chemist by profession. Look at the cattle tag. You're lazy bones, you know? And he's flashing back so far. Yeah. Round up's been sprayed up here in the upper, upper catchment, you know? Before that, probably 24D years ago. Right before the dam. Eric! Another crossing. It's all Little Wonder Creek. Yeah, yeah. They're coming. Right back to the horseshoe now. Yeah. And you saw back there too how Bucker Bendini Creek's dried up completely? Yeah, yeah, Bucker yeah. dried up. Mm. The only difference is that's been long. And this hasn't been thoroughly long. There you go. Oh, we're going to go across this one. Hey. Right there. Hey. Up there, see how it's all eucalypt up the top behind the brush box? Well, they burn that ridge. The two farmers here get together and they burn the top ridge all the way along, up into the forest. Every year, every second year at the outside. Up behind the rainforest up here. Hard to see from way down here. All of this is well and truly in the forest, right? By hundreds of metres. What's that 
Oh, yeah, yeah, hundreds of metres back, at least 200 yards back. Yeah, he's done a bit here too. Look, he's failing to get much further. A bit more every yeah. time. Widens it out a bit more every time. He's right, this bit here wasn't here a few years ago. Just this little bit, you know. So he slashed this back here. He's got here so far. He's going to go further, man. That way. And again, like, you know. Oh, yeah, this is not done by this is done by a tractor. There's got to be a trash wire track for this. Yeah. And yeah. he's well out of his boundary up here. That's been pulled down by the tractor. That's a log that's been snigged down there by a tractor and cut up down there. Right. I mean, they, they left a lot of stuff through here, even though they probably have pulled out a lot of the cedars. And when you walk like 100 yards off the track, Either side, there's still red cedar, coach, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is a ringwood, this one here. Eh? When they first came through and cut them all, they were sectioned, and the section revealed when you cross cut across the trunk, it revealed that there was light and dark and light and dark wood, bone colour and rose coloured in concentric circles. And so it was called ringwood. Oh. Yeah, so and, you've that's, got... and that's how you got Lord of the Rings. <laughs> well, they're house trees, you know, like if you cut down a thousand year old ringwood. <laughs> and a ring of ringwoods grows up around the stump, they close up and form a room inside. Yeah. Quite often with a vesica piscus shaped door opening in one or two faces. Yeah. And there's quite a few of them further up the valley here that I could show you. There's also some wrapped with strangler figs around the whole structure. Ha 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 And they want to turn all of this into a ringwood sanctuary, the local conservationists, it's on the books. But of course, forestry hasn't really determined that for years. Because it's the last large area of ringwoods left anywhere in intact habitat, anywhere in the world. They only ever grew in these three valleys. So beautiful. And all this water up here, right? And by the time you get down to that cow pasture down there, a few kilometres down, there's none. Right, so where's it gone? If all this water's up here, and when you get to the cow land down there, there's nothing. Then by the time you get down to my place, you've got good swimming holes again, where they're surrounded by trees. The only difference is the trees. Uh, it's going underground. There's yeah. none flowing out of the Buckland Creek. Buckland's dry, man. And the only difference there is it was logged. Because he pumped the shit out of it there. Oh, he's going for a big long Oh, yeah, if you change the soil temperature, the springs don't come to the surface at the same volume either. It has to be exactly four degrees Celsius at the surface for them to rise there. Nothing new, but you know, the fact is that it's crown lease, crown lease, it's native title. If the leases are broken, well, then nobody's really looking after the land, eh? The lease is broken, it's got to be rectified, hasn't it? Yeah. That's what we're going to do, that's what we're going to get rid of these cattle net out of here. Right. So it could be the natural way, man. If you look after your forest, you'll have good water in the streams. That's right. We know that, but this fucking redneck farmer down there got to be told. The Forestry Commission got to be told. Yeah, they've been told now today. <laughs> yeah, they've got him plenty of being told, eh? He's not the boss yet. Hmm. There's different trees you can cut. You just cut the bark down with sapwood. Get the sapwood off, just get all the bark chips you've picked up and boil it. Chuck the chips in, it'll go with pinkishy red colour. And you can store that, put it in bottles, and you can use that for saws and stuff like that to clean them up. Mm. That's like an antiseptic wash. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's so many different things in the bush, eh? Oh, yeah. But there's nobody up here that I know of that's doing it. So only, like I said, ten years ago, that bloke down there was forcing me to shoot in the forest. Right. We should have it up here. We should have it. With that, uh, Aboriginal foods and whatever in the bush <laughs> that's always is a full-time job on its own. That's it always really is. Yeah, man. They're still doing it today. They still go and get the bush taken yeah. today. They go and get oysters and jitty and everything, you know. Yeah, but you, 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 get, you get things out of the bush and yeah. without realising what you're doing, you do it second nature. Then you got to get a licence and get pippies out of the fucking sand. And you know, I don't, 10 pippies I don't go and get licence for pippies, I don't get licence for worms or nothing.
pleasure being in beautiful Sydney. Oh, good fun. <laughs> fun and laughter. So I can say. So how would you go about regenerating the beach here, do you think, Sean? Oh, it's too late for that. <laughs> We'd have to take out all the buildings all along the dune line, probably. And, uh,
Now we're in compartment 357. This is where the logging's actually already going on in the mistake. This is a log dump. This is where fairly large ancient rainforest stood. Um, most of this is being recut for the second time, but some of it is bona fide old growth. That's a big stump. That's the sound of logging approaching. So it looks like it's just been pushed out of the way, really, doesn't it? Looks like all the big old trees have been just cut out of here recently. And uh, only a few small ones have been left. They finished work in this bit. That's why the batters are up. Batters? Yeah, those things there. That's a huge amount of timber left down there. All of this area has been finished off. They're not going to take anything more out of this compartment. This is the state they're leaving it in. It's pretty steep country here too. Trees are bleeding. Riding blood on the back of the great Pacific bully. While the canary and giant boat and billion team marines had their homes and lands destroyed to feed our factories. Lose their culture, lose their courage, the beatings of their knees. Silence by fear for their families. Young and healthy, young and wealthy, young and free and young and white. Forest are still among the affluent, running water, food and shelter, in the yards without a bite, living in a lucky country by some strange twist of fate, while Palestinians, Panamanians, South Africans, Burmese, and our own homegrown oppressed the Aborigines, and the refugees of Kurdistan, I huddled in their tents, drinking water tainted with our excrement. What he put wants us in a jail and they want us to live in a jail. I don't put you in a jail and see how you like it. Nomadic tribes on <laughs> reserves is, uh, that's a big task. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Mama, they have done the body. Diamond tree down, eh? And what about the cemetery itself? come equal there, don't they? It's supposed to all come equal there. Do they come equal there though? They've got all the gurus over this side, look. All the gurus down that little pipe there. See the gurus flagging it there? On the round little side, all the black fellas there. See them all there? They stay there, a lot of them. They're not allowed near other people. They're going to stay down there where they've got to be. Yeah. At least you think it's one place you can keep together. No more. What do you reckon about the mission itself? The mission's fucked, man. There's new buildings going up and everything. What do you reckon that means? Uh, that's just to keep them quiet, I suppose. Keep them quiet about other things, what's going on in the bloody thing. They just put these up to keep them quiet. Look at that mansion on the hill. It takes all the water out of here from the mission, see? Comes it onto his farm over there, look. See? Dams it there and he dams it over the big dam. Pumps it out for his cattle and his pigs. 
So how are the houses for living in? Uh, you got any hot water? Third well, man, third well. Any, I mean, they look pretty good on the outside, but is there any hot water working in them or anything? Staves, the pipe, everything. Got no electricity? Oh, some places have, some haven't. Some of them staves don't work. No, a lot of them, there's no lights in there either. Oh, they just don't do nothing about it now. That's why they're putting up in new houses, quieting them down about other things. No front door in that place. You've got to put it up with a screwdriver at night. Put the front door up at night with screwdrivers. <whistles> you know what I mean? See you later, lads. What are you doing now? Going golf and thinking about it. And so that's the church that was that's it. the land of the mission that was attached to, yeah? Yeah. It's just a monument. The what? Sacred site monument for gubs, man. Oh, right. They don't go there no more. Watch out here, kids. This is beautiful Barrowville, isn't it? This is uptown Barrow. Barrowville. 3 30 in the afternoon, prime time for the school children. This is the capital. Now there's nothing now. It's a nice looking town, how do the people get on you reckon? Oh, half an hour. species are undertaken. State, for state forests are intent upon resuming logging in a few weeks. A dispute resolution process will be undertaken, though given past experience it is likely that direct action, direct action will be required later. <laughs> Mum, this is, this is what I'm doing, this is why I'm here, this is what it's all about. That, Australia. as they look at that and say, look, there's plenty of trees out there. You know? Nice, mate. Can we see Yarra Hatney from you? Yeah. That's it over there, is it? That's it right there, near the sea. Yeah. See Twin Peaks? Yeah. Sugarloaf? See the loaf, yeah. Crooked top. I don't know if that's... Taylor's arm. Hill. 30 k's, 50 yeah. k's tops. And there's the ocean. But by foot, yeah, 50, 80 miles. Like that. Yep, they're trashing everything from here to the sea. It's good to see so many people. We're still waiting for a few more. Yeah. Wait no, I, oh, I think we'll wait till yeah. 10 o'clock anyway, which is the appointed yeah. time. Yeah. Hello, folks. Hi, how's it going? Hi. Good. Good day, Steve. How are you, Jerry? Good, good. There are people here I recognise and people that I've spent a lot, lot of time talking to about this particular harvesting operation and people who have um, actually agreed that it could go on. But they did not incur include the traditional landowners and I'm hoping that today we can sort of make up for some of that. Last week our forestry grader was vandalised up on the Horseshoe Road. 
if it and at the same night one of the logging tractors up on the stake was vandalised. If anyone here was associated with that, then I will not deal with you. I do not know whether anyone was associated with it. I won't make any judgments. But we do not condone in any fashion that sort of vandalism. In fact, if it hadn't have occurred, the road that we would have, we're going to drive on the Kyde Road would have been fixed up, would have been in much better condition. Likewise, Billy Goat Road would have been. Okay, mate. So, um, that the sort of four and a half thousand bucks worth and putting a grader out of action for three weeks in one of the best times of year to grade roads is I think absolutely, well, contemptible. So on the assumption that no one here has got had anything to do with that, and I'm sure that assumption would be right, we'll go and continue our trip. Okay. Right. Oh, you've got to be there. Well, that's, why I'd like, that's why I'm here. I'd like to go up and just see for my own eyes, you know, just what they want to do, you know. I mean, at the meeting you showed us and there was maps and there was this and there was that. Well, that's all fair enough, but it's good to go up there and, you know, go, well, oh, look, there's, you know, go and say, yeah, oh, look, you know, there's a bloody koala, you can't. Yeah. We had a koala just outside last night. And all in this morning too. I seen one up there that time it came up to your house. There was one up the one in the tree there. Yeah, well there was another one that I got up this morning and it was still grunting. Yeah. Even when the light was <laughs> late until about 8 o'clock this morning. Excellent. Well, look, there's a, there's a lot of times when in times of recession and this and that where they've had to close down big car companies like Chrysler and and, and you know the big plants they used to have in Melbourne and Adelaide and places like that and they had to lay off a thousand, two thousand people yeah. you know and I mean they had to do it so they did it and now this guy's trying to say that because of half a dozen people we've all got to lose our land you know eventually because we've got no water for yeah. it doesn't make sense you know that argument just doesn't hold up not just that, you know, they trash something that's literally thousands of years old to make four jobs for six weeks. That's right, and he yeah. doesn't understand that that's what we're trying to say to the guy. Right? The money lasts that person's family and one week. That thing we saw on TV last night, that, that, that opened my eyes a bit, like that thing on Burrow. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's a valiant behind us. Yeah. Well, there you go. Good, yeah. Okay, there's a whole lot of sediment coming into this creek, obviously. The sediment, as you drive up along the, the road from Argent's Hill, you see the stream bank erosion, you see some erosion from, from roads, including the Shire Road. You see a whole lot of sediment coming in. This is one source. This is one that we wanted to fix before, the, before this coming wet season. And, and we all see things that happen in the past that you know, yeah. aren't, aren't acceptable by today's, by today's standards. Yeah. So, so no, they didn't always do that. Um, My concerns fall on the lines though that by today's standards, tomorrow they may have not been sufficient either. We, it, look, it's obviously the standards of the community keep on changing. Uh, we, we believe that, well very recently we lost about one quarter of the, of the wood. We had to reduce the, the growth in the industry by one quarter for erosion prote protection. Now, we... But you've still got to supply just as much, like on TV last night, like, like with Borrell, you've got to still honour yes. agreements that were made before, yes, right. even though, okay, you have a quarter of your, yes. your quota or whatever, or, or whatever, but that means you've got to trash twice as hard, and you've got no choice but to try and appease well, us. Well, and, and well, well, hang on, hang on. Which means that you've got to do it anyway, you know, it's... it's hang on. All right. Okay. Yeah, um, yes, we do have wood supply agreements with quite a few companies, including Borrell. We, we were really banking on increasing the yield out of these forests. Yeah, right. As a forest, as a regrowth that you see around you matures. Yeah. Is that, that's regrowth, is it? So are the forests getting this guy for defamation or something like that? Or oh. bullshitting about... Like but look, there's, there's one other thing you yeah, were sure. saying about leaving six habitat trees... Per, per hectare. Per hectare. Where they exist. Okay, now if they don't exist, Please. do you then leave the six biggest trees? Because a habitat tree doesn't 
come within what 150 years or whatever it takes uh, to become actually livable yeah. for these animals. Depends on depends on the species. Okay, so there's no say there's no six trees there at all. Just yeah. for argument's sake, do you leave the six biggest trees to give them the fairest chance of becoming habitat trees? Because you also said that uh, it also becomes more. Uh, the, the, more animals. It's more prolific the way you guys go about it. You get it just doesn't seem right to me. Well, you, you take the diversity of the forest mm -hmm. that, that happens after logging is, is well known to to add to the diversity of the fauna. Yeah, but diversity can but, also mean yeah. rats and oh. cats and and bloody well, foxes well, and rabbits yeah. and. Hang on. If it was new road construction. Then you've got a case, oh, but because yeah. all this roading network's already in place, yeah. that that argument um, isn't really doesn't really hold up. Back well, to however, the six trees. Six trees yeah. What now, happens? Yeah. There? The National Parks says that if six don't exist, then you keep whatever number that do exist. This um, is in moist forest we're talking hang about. Hang on, I don't understand. And, what? and you only have to keep going that number which do exist. Now, all right. But now, I'm saying. We're, that Hang on. I'm saying, oh, for argument's sake, there's none we'll, there, habitat we'll, trees, we'll but there's some that could be in another 10, 15 no. years or whatever. No, we don't have to. Oh, uh, and, and the reason is that... That's all I wanted to know. The reason is that in forests, in some parts of the forest, uh, we have spent money improving their productivity. And that has required... Whose productivity? The, the productivity of the forest for timber. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. By, by, by planting what, what you... No, what no, trees you no, want. But by ring barking and actually killing out the trees that were not merchantable, which would include all the habitat trees. Yeah. Okay, now we did that very deliberately because these forests are dedicated for long-term wood production. And we a number of other purposes. We, yeah, yeah, many other purposes. Hang on, no, we, we currently have a zoning system, but you're right, forests do many things apart from grow timber. Mm -hmm. and, and that zoning system will have, will range from intensive wood production plantations or, or areas where we've done that work through to areas which will have no harvesting. And there's a whole range of gamut, a whole range of, of uh, options within that. Sure, but I can tell you now it'll be 1% area you have no harvest and 99% area where you do well, Because it well, comes on. back to the contracts that you have no choice but to fill where it comes in, I mean, hang we're on. probably wasting our time doing all this, yes. you know. We'd like to think that we, we right. could maybe get something. Yeah. In. Okay, we, we have, because we've already spoken to some people, reduced the area to be harvested by about three quarters. What, for this year? Yes, in this block. And then what happens next year? Well, next year, um, sorry, I, did, I should talk about the current oper the okay, operation we're, okay. we're planning. Okay. Maybe we wait till we get up there. Okay, yeah. all right. But your but, balance but, but is biased. Your balance no, is so on. totally biased. It's it has to be, just for the nature of what you are and what you do. Well, I mean, none I, of these I, animals I, have I, got I, a I, voice. None of these animals yeah, have got these freaking koalas. Ah, and they're splitch. And it's, oh, tough, there's another yeah. one. I, I, oh, I'll I, kick I, it I, under a bit. Oh, yeah, no one yeah. saw that. I, I resent the what you are. Right. These got the 18 and 19. So how many koala scats have you found right here in the, under this one tree? Twenty. You got twenty so far? Yeah. And here we are right in the middle of log dump two in compartment 398. There's the loading ramp there. So that's the three species that we've got here. Bloodwood, Bloodwood turpentine, turpentine, tallowwood, and blue gum. So we've got blue gum. So we've got four and species. Like giant ones as well. I mean, all the blue, the blue gum there is just humongous. That is a humongous blue gum. And so are these tallowwoods right here. I mean, this tallowwood's really. Have a look at this one. There's hollows all the way up it. The, the bottom line is the National Parks and Wildlife Service 
wants us to protect the notch trees because it's those trees which are of critical importance. For and the a large area well, around those feed trees. But what about the trees that live in? They, well, don't, they don't live in the same tree they're feeding. No, and that's that's what the habitat habitat tree so prescriptions are about. Or, yes. saying, oh, such as the one you you underneath. Yeah. So, so what you're yeah. saying is, all right, our anecdotal evidence. Yes, we have heard yellow bellies around here is nice, but we can't find the trees, so we're sorry, we'll just we'll just go through anyway. <coughs> Like you you said that the they point. agreed to you logging down here, yes. and now you've told us you can't log down there, so you're logging up here, and that just happens to be the area they were concerned about. Well, can, can we, do you mind sending us something right in if you don't have to log the Yellowtail blacks, eh? We'll get them all back there. Uh, the yeah, they're yellowtails, man. You know, we are not allowed to publicly say anything against the government. Many of you would ask, what's the point of participating in the parliamentary system? It is, after all, as presently practiced, both hierarchical and patriarchal, with the elected representatives too often not being for the people. I give you, the answer I can give you is that state parliament will ultimately decide the future of New South Wales forests, and probably within the duration of the next state government. And that's something to be considered. We won't be logging within 350 metres was the very closest point that we'd, we would log to that, to the creek. And that's up here. We are not going to log down below that in this operation this year. Now, we have, we don't, we do not believe that there'll be a way into this compartment, into the bottom part of that. Listen, but, but I'm not going I'm to- sorry to interrupt you, sorry. but can we have this in writing? Yes. Not going to, yeah, okay. Yes. I appreciate I, getting something. It's just saying for this year, though. I mean, yes, I am well, saying well, it's true already. All right, but we worry yeah. about next year, next year. Yeah. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. no, yeah. and, and look, so do I. Because after next year, we will have an environmental impact like statement, if the forest, which has been after the, <laughs> the, the stink that I, <coughs> and we've kicked up. If they bloody start. Well, going in without notifying some of the landholders next time. I mean, you know, there's um, going to be some pretty angry um, people about it. I could be coarse and say that there'd be district foresters who wouldn't have much of a head left. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, Let's take what you say as gospel then. Well, I'm prepared to put no, it just, in writing. This is the yes. first time we've heard it. It's not on the harvest plan. No, it's not in the harvesting plan. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's in fact, great news. Okay. And in fact, mm. at the meeting last week, we still were hoping to get in there. To get in there. Yeah. Well, there's swimming holes all the way down here, 10, 12, 15 foot deep, if you want to jump in one. There's one right there that's about 7 foot deep. It's just crystal clear, so it doesn't look that deep. Okay, so for this year, we're looking at about 40 or 50 truckloads of timber. Full stop, which will come... If, oh, I can just change to the map that we are used to seeing. Um, it will, they will go out down along the horseshoe road. Steve, I've had okay. one of the crossing hams, the Diane, who's yeah. a teacher who couldn't be here today. She wanted yes. water testing yep. done before, during and yep. after, and six months after. Okay. Um, there's some real problems with that. Mm. One is at the moment, water. there's no water to test. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. One, well, no, if we, can, we can test the water in a pool, mm. but that won't do anything for us. But the river's flowing down there in Little Wonder. It's Quite flying quite mm, well, yeah. just down the hill here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, the well, yeah. Well, well, near the gate there it was flowing. Yeah, wasn't? and yeah. it does okay. flow. Further up it flows better. It flows yeah. Yeah. Really and then Bucker just seems to suck it. <laughs> yeah. You just can't get into it. Thing. Yeah, you can. Been well, hang on, where? In, in, Above in, that road, there's in, in heaps the of water. In, yeah. in any season. But, no, no, oh, tons of giant pools, deep oh. swimming holes. Yeah. The work's right yeah. up there yeah. now, yeah. even in this drought. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Or, 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 yeah. Well, what I want to do for water sampling is be able to do it in a cost-effective way. 
every sample, if it takes a day to get, costs five hundred. Well, costs a few hundred dollars. I don't have that sort of I'll people around. I'm willing to chip we'll in. We'll do it for hundred. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll Bring your samples for Give me a day's pay, and I'll walk up Little Wonder and get a bucket full of water. <laughs> Behind me here is a red cedar growing in paddock, cow paddock. And this is the mouth of the little wonder forest. Is it dead or what? Uh, it's actually a deciduous tree, so it's lost all its leaves. It's a few hundred yards of uh, cattle country, and we've got algal blooms happening in what was a beautiful stream just moments ago. Sort of kind of void, really. <laughs> Look at that all the way along, mate. That's hell. Unless it's done in an intelligent way. Oh, the cows! The cows aren't out there because there's no feed left on the flats. So the farmers have driven the cows up into the state forest to get their winter feed, quote unquote. Notice all these paddocks are bare, recovering. We're only about two, three k's down from the Little Wanda rainforest, um, and now the uh, creek's really looking good. It's showed its face again, but it's full of all this brown sort of pooey cloud. <laughs> oh, there's a brown pooey cloud in the water, just sort of like algae and dirt from the road here. This is this big washout just where we're filming at the moment. Lovely stuff. Is this the same creek as up there, bros? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's only about two k's down from where the rainforest stops and there's no water left in it. She's hiding. There's all that yeah. water upstream and there's none down here. With the quiet sun, she's on the run. Oh, with the quiet sun. <laughs> I have to go get to it. She's on the run, she's on the run. Is that the Buckrabendini Creek? This is Buckrabendini Creek that everybody's supposed to share. And this farmer next door here, Johnny Jones, he's a cow farmer. He's pumped this river out to look like that now. It's usually pretty full. It could cope with the drought and we could all share it, but he's been pumping his fields up regularly every day. And he's taken this to this level and finished with it. And it's not filling back up anymore because there's no water left in the hills. And this is where I pump from down the bottom. If we walk down, I'll show you what it used to be. This is where you get your water from. Yes, this is where we get our water from to shower with and to wash with. And, and the way it is now is water resources, last time when it got dry like this, told us to put bleach in our water. Because uh, the kids are getting ear infections and eye infections from just showering with it. We're not drinking it, but even that when part's that? affecting us. When was that, last time? That was a few months ago, oh. yeah, we had water resources over. And then we've had a, a few little rains, but it hasn't filled it back up anymore. And Johnny's been pumping it out, and I've noticed, like, in the past week, it's gone down a good foot. And it's not filling up again over here. Now, what he's going to do here, if he keeps on pumping, he's going to take it right down, and it's not going to fill up, and I won't have any water to pump 
for my washing yeah. or my showering. I've got a drinking tank that comes off the roof, but that's pretty low as well. And this is the water supply for the towns downstream as well, yeah? Yep. And, and I, mean, t I hear in town that a lot of the people are complaining about infections too, and they seem to be just accepting it. But this is probably why they're getting it, the same as my children are. How long have you lived here now? 14 years. I've been living here, and I used to canoe up and down this river. And even in the worst droughts then, it was drought when I first came, it was still flowing better than this. And I, th I think because of the drought, we should be a bit more careful with what we've got and reserve it a bit better and he's actually gone there and and with his tractor bulldozed it all flat and changed the river and um, I was quite shocked he'd asked nobody and he's actually only leasing this land off the next door neighbour who doesn't know he's done this who owns the property and so, so he's broken quite a few laws actually but he seems to be getting away with it all it's drought, there's pumping restrictions but the river's still being pumped dry right here yep, yep and there's, there's no trees on the banks at all? Well, there used to be. I used to have, see how the river oak are growing here? Well, I've actually stopped him putting his cows on my side of the property here to allow them to grow. Because when I first came here, we had these here, and he actually chainsawed them all down and left them. And uh, I, I didn't realise what it could do to the river then, so I just let it go. Because I used to live just close by the river over this side. Um, and I used to watch what he did to it. But he's also chopped trees down on that bank over there, which has changed. He does it purposely to change the rivers. He's worried his flats are going. But the other thing that's happened too is his flats are going because there are big logs coming down from the start of the river somewhere that in the floods were actually getting into the banks and knocking the trees out. The last few floods did that. And they were logs that came down. Obviously, somebody's chopped the trees there and left them and they've just washed into the river and damaged the whole river along the way. In bad droughts in the past, did it actually get this low? No, no. When I noticed the changes in the river too, there's a farmer who has no trees on his property uh, at the start of uh, the uh, Bakra Bendini and he's had two landslides that have gone across the road and into the river and since that, and then the floods that came after those landslides, I noticed the river the gra filled up with gravel, yeah. lots of gravel. Also helped knock trees out and, and damage the whole uh, river again. And between that, the logs and the farmers, the, the river just has no chance. Apparently he's been, uh, he's been shooting the roofs down here as well. Um, there's more of the body over here. What about the Gumbangia? Like they own all these forests under yeah. native title, Look. don't they? And they've just lodged a claim. Do they have a say? And until the tribunal hears the claim. You guys can't really log Yes, excuse me. Yeah. They haven't lodged a claim. They have lodged a claim. They lodged it last Thursday. Oh, you didn't know. Jim. Oh, you they they lodged it last uh, Thursday. Oh, I wasn't aware of that. <coughs> they, we meet with them every month. saves cuts down on the walking time like you said so as soon as we get ground to cover as soon as we get to yeah. something really steep just continue down the steep bit yeah forget about surveying look the government's standing up there and it's actually the government and the guy standing there saying we've got a we've got contracts where we're in 
our con our our uh, orders have to be filled no matter what. So whether you have to barge in the places that you say are twenty five percent that you've left alone, no. what happens if it gets to the point where you've well, you've got to fulfill your quota and, well, and, and there's no uh, hang on, all the contracts have got clauses that state that if the resource is withdrawn for any purpose, then there's a way out. I mean, I appreciate your side of it. You've yeah, got to I do the best you can. You've got to keep us happy and your boss happy, sure. But if it wasn't for people like us, you guys would be getting away with murder. You would be, you know. And I, and you know, but but so all we can do is voice our opinions. And I worry about about whatever animals that need a habit. I get told that certain birds can't survive unless they've unless they're because of their wingspan. So they need a hole of a certain width to get into trees and things. They don't get there within 100, 150 no, years, no, things no. like this. That's right. I mean, so what do we do? Do we just flick the birds because we've got a few contracts to fill? Yeah. I know, it's Mate, it's, 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 it's a real it's dilemma, dilemma yeah. isn't it? But, 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 but that's, that's, in fact, in a nutshell, there's a whole dilemma about these forests, about yeah. forests like this. Mm. Now, some people would say that in the ideal world, there'll be no logging of native forests. Yeah, okay. In the ideal yeah. world, but, but places would be set apart yeah. And, and look, look, yeah, look, well, you know, I know you're right. If someone asked me at the meeting on Friday, what, what is, uh, why are you logging before the EIS is done? Mm. And, and the reason is that it's such a big employer, mm. that the industry is such a big employer. Mm. But the, yeah, and lo, all those jobs, the, the environmental the impact of putting all those people out of work immediately mm -hmm. was deemed by the government to be less acceptable mm -hmm. than keeping them going. Oh. Now, trashing wood, really chip, wood chips, wood chips, trashing old growth for wood chips is there. like chopping up Van Gogh and Masters yes. to make confetti. Okay, I it, it might make, not, it, it, it yeah. might keep confetti manufacturers in um, in employ, but there, there is no in the long term. It's not sustainable. There, the day we heard the other day that about. Um, but, We've actually got a chance, we have got a chance of getting employment in the forest National to go Conservation and, Council. and do the surveys. Now how many people? That's, yeah. that's quite a few. 70,000 that, bucks worth was, of wages. Yeah, right? we've yeah. Got, we've now that's a very strong point. That means yeah. I can get a job. Yes. A I can get a job. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's like he but, says, it's the government at the time. They've agreed. I mean, Australia does what it's told by America, the superpowers or whatever. And it's like you say, they all voted it in, the National Party, the Liberals, the Labor. Uh, anyway. Well, they basically do as they're told anyway, you know, by the, well, the, the New the, World the, Order. The federal government yeah. made oh, an agreement yeah. with the state government, some of them. National. So we've got to leave old growth alone. alone. I mean, how old are the of this teller? We've got the border pumps. I mean, are they 100, 200, 300? It's sort of hard to say, nobody's done any work on it. This is a big tree. That's a mistake. Huge. <laughs> Probably one of the biggest ones I'll get. I love it. More often than not, you're a piece. Once the job's done, it's done. Tough. If every tough. Once the trees are gone, it's oh sorry, we didn't realise that. And, and it really, in all honesty, it's going to be like that for the yellow belly gliders here. There really are large colony of yellow belly gliders right here. There's koala, there's koala colonies up the road too. We haven't found any evidence of koalas yet in this compartment. I got like one out we my back door yeah. this morning screaming, shouting. No, 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 we've got scats up and down the road here They've, yeah. that have actually, I'm, I'm surprised what? that the people up in the, the, wasn't, wasn't the camp haven't actually reported them to you. We've got koala scats up the road here. Uh, we've got koala scats down there. There's a tree with a K on it around 100 metres around yeah. the bend here, which means that's a tree that koala scats were found under. There's three trees like that on the road that you asked us to mark. They're marked with Ks to say that they were koalas there. This area, there's been people camped here for a year listening to yellow belly gliders fly across their heads, watching them up and down these trees. You can see the scratch marks on some of them and just up there a couple of hundred meters of v-notch trees now if you've sent in experts to find v-notch trees and they haven't found them there's something very major wrong with the experts and the whole Hang process we, 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 we came in here with the people who were camping and asked them to show us the v-notch trees they did not show us the v-notch trees well that's not the report i got from the people well, who were camping personally well, I'm, I mean, I'm sorry you haven't been told the, 
Well, you're not getting that's any, any fair enough. Mate. Well, that's if you weren't showing them. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. No, no, no. Pardon me. No, if you're not showing them, that's not the point. The point is they are there. Right now, why aren't you finding them? Why is it up to us to find them? Why aren't there any surveys going on in these forests before you log endangered species habitat? A yellow belly, eh? Yep. That is a yellow belly glider, Pateras Rollans. It's on Schedule 12 of the National Parks and Wildlife Services. Schedule of rare and endangered fauna. Forestry Commission admit that they're rare and endangered and will establish a 100 metre buffer zone around their feed trees, which they mark by a V notch. Peteroides folans. So look, in, oh, I don't think you do. in in every compartment there are endangered fauna. In every single sure, compartment, sure, whether sure. it's Yellow belly gliders, or whether it's koalas, or whether it's yeah, Steve. But where you get colonies, this, but where you get colonies is supposed to be we, reserved. Now we know there's a colony here, and your process you of logging, we, I'm we sorry, do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We do know there's a colony here, but the process of the process of logging hasn't found it. A bunch of independent greens who happen to have wandered up here before the logging found it. And we're so there's something. So there's something very wrong with the process. Okay, no, just just that. assume for the fact that there may be a colony of uh, yellow belly gliders here. If you haven't found it, then there's something very wrong with the process that's supposed to preserve them. <laughs> Properly, if you come in, if people say they've heard them at night, why don't you come in there at night time and, and just do research then, you know? If you yeah. really care, yeah. 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 why do you not come in here at doing, night? You know, you'd be sending up people at all hours. Yeah. Yeah. We don't give a shit, really. Steve? Oh, I find that offensive if you don't mind. Cork Cork's currently going. I think that is totally offensive. Yeah, logging's offensive to us. I'm sorry, but I find it. Okay, you know, we're all pretty heated about this. We're all sorry. But look, if you start. If you start. Uh, 1,800 hectares of old growth forest is left in a mistake. This is a very steep area. There is massive erosion from past loggings and obviously potential erosion of if logging goes ahead. There are up to 21 rare and endangered species in the area. The fauna impact statement is very deficient. If logging goes ahead, it will probably be under temporary licenses to take and kill endangered species. This is compartment 398. Right. Uh, this is the border of the league scrub flora, uh, this row. It looks freshly cut. That's a lot steeper than it looks, and it looks pretty steep. Here's a small way from, what's this one? So there's a log dump. There's a log dump mark in the middle of the koala habitat there, eh? So this must be the marked koala habitat. Just coming down here, I reckon, looking at that map, just down around where that bulldozer is. Right. It's probably parked on the edge of what it wants to make into the log dump, it hasn't already. Which is in the koala habitat. I can't believe they put a log dump what in the do koala the habitat. Dump, but what's function? What is its, its function is to be a big, air, flat area with no trees in it. They used to, to drive the trucks into to load the timber under the trucks. Right, so they drag them to that spot and then... Yeah, up the sneak tracks to that spot and then up this road and out. It's hard to see how the koalas could find their ways back to these trees with all their scent tracks disrupted and everything as well, I reckon. Those, um, those two big tallow woods appear to have tracks going all up them, from what I can see through the binoculars. The whole idea of logging around all these trees, with just leaving the habitat trees bare with nothing surrounding them, is just absolutely ridiculous. This old growth tree here has got something like 8 to 10 hollows in it. There's another one over here about 40 metres away that's the same. And there should be six habitat trees per hectare and we certainly haven't passed six H's per hectare. So they're going to 
cut all of the trees around this koala tree. That's what those red spots mean, they're cut marks, and the mm. K's a koala mark. That doesn't look very good at all, does it? Both those trees are within 10 metres of the koala habitat tree, both on the slope of, I guess, as close to 30 degrees as you could get. Well, it seems, seems very much like there's a thing going between the national parks and forestry that forestry goes through the motions of outwardly appearing to fulfil their requirements with regard to national parks, but in reality the uh, sustaining of the habitat here is, as far as koalas go is it's just not possible to maintain it with this type of intense logging activity. Well I can't see the value in even identifying koala habitat here because for all intents and purposes it's being completely logged and uh, certainly there's no koalas that are going to remain here after the intense logging activities so basically I, I think that it's completely pointless leaving any tallow woods here at all They might as well just strip it all bare because the koalas are all moving away eh? Well certainly it's going through a process of outwardly appearing to be doing the right thing but in reality there's just no way that the koalas would maintain this habitat can't see the koalas staying in here, you know. It just doesn't look to me like koalas are going to hang around here with this sort of activity somehow. For all of the k's you want to spray on trees, this is not going to work. <sighs> We've spent many hundreds of thousands of dollars on endangered, on endangered fauna. On four <coughs> trying to work out where they are, work out where the biggest. But the actually, to hang tell on, you, the, the fauna survey in this whole forest, the, the, the Oaks Forest and the Buckerbend Any Forest, the surveyors were only given a couple of days each to work in here. Well, they weren't given enough time to do, time to do any on. sort of a thorough well, job. In, this, in any of the forests that we're looking at, we're, that's not the months case. And months of research done. I'm sorry, but that's not. not two days yeah, look, not I, I know what you say, alright? I don't think that what you're asking for is. Logical. It well, that's yeah, I can see a, that point, but it's not really logical about flattening what, this forest, you know, what, what people have, haven't done research properly. The, the people who vote and make most yeah, of the, uh, yeah, who make most of the decisions stuff, never come out stand here like we do now. I mean, it's easy well, to see. They did once, they banned rainforest logging when they did it in 1983, when the whole legislature came up and stood in the rainforest of Terrania. They banned rainforest logging that week, because they saw with their own eyes. It took a sawmill being burnt down, you know, it's... Not. Just below the road here you've got the beginning of the establishment of rainforest. Birds nests, cycads, tree ferns, different rainforest species of trees. And all mixed in with these great hollow bearing trees as well. Mm. well we just better watch out for the bulldozer here but what I was saying is, is they've used so much timber here that stop erosion that I wonder whether they're using the trees that they're actually cutting down to mill to actually stop the erosion. The fence line there goes for oh, There's probably thousands of dollars of timber in there. I believe there is a continual move towards plantations. Mm -hmm. Already in this district they supply one third of the total volume oh, that comes out. It would be great if we but, could just make them but, to be yeah. the yeah. primary the old APPM yeah. plantations yeah. in the series, don't you? Yeah, that's right. I've seen shows on TV no, where they say the that pallets. there's so many different alternatives to, to, do, to all the stuff that you're doing. You're chopping these trees down because you need the wood for building and for for pallets and for, pallets and for all sorts of stuff <laughs> and, they, and they've got so many ways of so many other different ways of doing it but it all comes down to the money I suppose the infrastructure is already set there and that it's, it's not only money but it's also comes down to the fact that the demand for wood products is so high Australia still imports one third of its wood always yeah. has yeah now you, you spoke about rainforest logging earlier. It's a bloody shame. And, uh, uh, and whilst we logged rainforest in the 1980s and the government decided that we shouldn't, 
In fact, what we've d done since then as a nation mm. is import it. Yeah. That's right. That's I really think it's stupid. absolutely criminal. Well, I personally a, won't buy it. I, I, I don't think it, I won't buy it. I don't, and, and I think well, all of us, I mean, why? I mean, we when Malaysia has no forest left to yeah. send us over here anymore, well, and we've got some, it's because people have taken yeah, the no. concern and have fought yeah. people like yourselves and politicians. Hang on, who, you, no, no, you, no, you, no. you listen to like me, myself. please. I will indeed, sorry. Thank mate. you. That um, it's, it's on the basis that you say that now we have set this aside. You didn't set it aside. You were under pressure from politicians who were under pressure from the public to set areas aside to stop taking so many of areas so that these areas would exist. And okay, now economically, we're now importing rainforest timbers and rare timbers that are coming from other areas simply because they are available. <coughs> when they stop being available, we'll stop importing them. Okay? So, you know, we're talking about the same pressures, the same reasons that we're all here today as they were fighting for years and years ago. The same pressures that will exist tomorrow for the same reasons. We're not talking about forests, we're talking about animals, we're talking about the rivers, we're talking about the amount of moisture in the air and in the ground. Now, all those things are a base, are part of what you can, what you, are part of the area that you consider only really on the basis of what you can get from a commercial value for the timber. Everything that you have is based on your commercial value of that area. You said that you would go into 300 metres from the creek if you could get in there. You said you would <laughs> like to get in there. Yes, I would. Yeah, okay. But, but now that's just the point that I'm making. If you can get in there, you'll go in there. The only thing that will stop you because there's no legislation, yeah. right? Okay. Okay. The only thing that stops you is people coming up and saying, don't do it, or you can't physically okay. get in there. I believe as a person there must be a balance between the, the conservation of nature yeah. and the economic well-being of mankind, right? Because I, I believe that if there is poor economic well-being, then the environment suffers. You see countless examples of that overseas. Sure. Mm. So, so I believe that economic well-being is important. And so being a rich nation, we have the chance to make a lead and actually preserve more than That's anywhere right. else in the world. But the trouble is that but, economics but is mostly big companies like well, Boral and things who don't really well, care about the... Well, 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 so don't you have danger. to close the forest to keep people out? No, I don't have to. Um, I, and I obviously prefer not to. Uh, but on very bad days, I will. Yeah, well, but I but they fight. are a potential oh. source of fire. And also, I cannot guarantee their safety if there is a big fire. And from Surely if there was a fire yeah, coming, they could see it. Safety, if I know they're there, I am. And it's... You yes, go and tell them, OK, guys, you've got to go. Got to go. What, what happens if they don't? People? I'm sorry, they still have to obey the law too. Um, uh, then what was the... I hope in the future that that will be the case. But I hope in the future that that what you're saying and what you believe is obviously you believe it. I hope you believe what you're saying, you know. I don't have to agree with you, but I like the person who believes in what you're saying. I hope that what you believe in, it will be the true outcome. Because if, if it's not, then you're a farce right now. And, and what you've said to us was either false, a lie, or you've been misled. And I, I really hope that in the future it doesn't come to one of those circumstances and I fear that it will and I fear it already exists. You know, that we're worried of the cumulative up. effect. 2% yeah, this year, whatever, yeah. next year and stuff. And like, also, it's not just us. We, present, we represent hundreds of thousands of people. Yes. Most of the people in Australia are just sitting watching the TV. They don't, not, they've never been out to a forest yeah, know, like this. Mate, mate. They're all the voters and the people who vote the, the government in. It's up to us to ch on their behalf, you know, to get off their... They won't get off their fat asses, so I suppose it's up to us to have to yeah, do it, you know. But if we could get... If you could get most of the, 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 the voters out just to show them, not a photograph, not a television, but to say this is it and this is what you're going to lose and this is how... what what I'm sure that it would happen overnight. 
Yeah. I'm really sure it would. There'd be show a major them this difference. And then take them down the road to League Scrub and show them the difference. I'm sure that would get the Australian public up. I'm right, sure right. that. Yeah. But yeah. is anybody doing that, Steve? Is anybody showing them oh, yeah. this in League Scrub? No, 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 it's not in their interest to do it. It's in our interest to do it. Decent drop just here. Yeah. Both sides, really. See any old roads in there? Not really, it looks pretty much virgin territory. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's interesting, but you can't see any of those like dead white tree crowns sticking up either. Like no, or any of those eroded bits on top. Mm. It all seems to be pretty much intact, the one, one blanket sort of. Yeah. Fuck, I'd love to walk. Nice walk all along the top of those ridge lines. Well, we'll get your chance then. One of these days. Let's go for a walk. Did you? supposed to have an H painted on them. You see that big one up there? Yeah. There's no H on that. Does it look like a habitat tree? It's full of hollows, isn't it? Native um, animal lives in there. Just wondering with a question mark on Apartment 398. 148 by 60. What do you said he was just doing draining? Oh, 6 by 60. Could he bring these logs in? Or? Yeah, Them just come with him. So I say, man. What well, did he tell you he was just doing drainage today? Yeah. What are they doing here? They person lie again. They always lie, man. This, this blueberry is what I thought it was. It's Blueberry ash. Ah. Blueberry ash. Rainforest species. Subtropical and temperate sub, uh, rainforest species. In the middle of the so called black part, eh? Yep. Nice habitat trees. Yeah, well, there's that one. That one there, the H. 
Oh, it's really destroyed around it. You get a good perspective here of the um, what's here. You've just got logs, dry soil, and a habitat tree, a very large habitat tree, smack bang in the middle of it. I don't know what the animals are going to do that are living in that tree or potentially in the future are going to live in that tree. Palawood and blue gum. Predominantly blue gum. All these logs? Yeah. yeah. A couple of big fellows. Palawood, Palawood, blue gum. But didn't they say they were only taking out black butt? I don't know, but these are all blue gum. What the heck they are? No, there's no doubt. Hallowood, blue gum, blue gum. Yeah, by about 35, 16. We're 30, 35 by 152, 35. So 213 metres. Oh, mud brick houses and uh, yeah. you know, but once again I still like to use nice timber yeah. beams in the place and mm. timber walls and yeah. the timber veranda. It's tech, tech. Mm. So the bridge section is, oh, what do they call it, a pre-stressed timber somehow. Really thick plywood and it's a terrific product. Yeah well, they've got all new beams and stuff, that's the building houses now yeah. they're all made up I think of they different make them out of heads. That's it, I use timber as a builder. I love nothing better than I'll grow. It's never to work with, I mean, but you know. Come on now. There is nothing more pleasant than standing around in a nice bit of forest talking to people. Let's try and do it. Every Australian should get to do it so as they realise just what's happening here. He lost the case. Well, again, Steve. You have no need to worry about this bit, I can assure you. Well, that's good to hear. Thanks for coming, Steve. Oh, yeah. well, I hope Great everyone day. can. If not, if not, be happy. I hope everyone can live with it. And, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> we don't have any choice, Steve. <laughs> Apart from going through politicians to change the rules that you work under, which is the only avenue open to us, unless you people yourself decide to make a representation to change the rules of government, which won't yeah. happen. It has an immediate impact on the quality of our life, of the, the area here and the water and the whole environment itself and, and I think that's a pretty good cause for concern. The original draft harvesting plan said four and a half thousand cubic metres. Personal communication from John Bell yesterday morning in the Urunga office, he said that they had dropped it down to 600 cubic metres. Direct question, I said, how many cubes are you down to? And he said 600. Um, so between us and the water users group, we've 
got them from four and a half thousand cubes down to 600 which isn't it's 3,900 cubic metres. I mean, that's a fucking lot. 600 over 3,900 is about, what? Well, we viewed as a major victory already, yeah? And as, so now we just got to work out how to cut them out of the last bit. Yeah. Yeah. And the water users, apparently the water users group are happy with the outcome of all the negotiations. So maybe it's... Still under land claim as well. Oh yeah, it's still under land claim. Yeah, mm. we don't have to worry. That will be, I guess, by Saturday morning, tomorrow night, Saturday morning, we'll know what legislation we can pull on them. <coughs> um, yeah, that's good because they want to start on Monday. Log in the wonder. Yeah, I oh, fuck it. Jesus. That's my sentiment exactly. Okay, so look, you know, they want to go in and log on Monday. What are our choices at this point? The grade is going to be there, probably by tomorrow, Grade and Mackay's Road, at very least. You know, what are our the choices? The question is, is that forest a high conservation forest <coughs> that satisfies 7 out of 10 of the NIFA criteria? If it does, yeah, then... Shit, yeah, well, yeah, if it does, yeah. and you forget the rest, and it's a NIFA block A. That's what John Corkle said to me on the phone a few days ago. Okay, what? now we've got to decide what we want to do with that, whether we want to actually do that. Oh. Time out, time out. Anywhere in Australia, an Aboriginal tribe can ask this conciliatory body, like they do the, the juggling, they can ask them to tell them whether they can have bits of Australia that haven't had native title extinguished. Native title's been extinguished on freehold um, and pastoral leases so far. Every other, um, uh, and national parks, yeah, every other land tenure is up in the air. So there are enough groups really interested in this and really busting to um, put the pedal to the metal on this particular case because it hasn't been tried before. This state forests business. Um, well, let's see if they can save it by Monday then. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. And today is Thursday. Oh, Thursday night. Thursday night. They can't log until A, the final harvesting plan comes out, B, we've been in with state forests to check a rainforest typing discrepancy. And C, until we've been in to do a check of where he's marked. That's right. We're, we got that out of him. I think it's actually twice we requested that he wants you to all move out of the forest like this weekend. Oh, he wants us to all move out of the forest this weekend. Yeah, but he can't tell us that because he doesn't own it. Um, and if he tries to tell us that he owns it, we'll just refer him to the land claim. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Who owns it? I don't want nothing. All I want is for the children. Children come first. That's all I know. There's nothing else after me but the children. That's all I got to say. But if you could have anything that you wanted in the way of justice, if you could have anything you wanted in the way of justice, what would it be? I'd like to have peace. I'd like to have a rainbow people. But just <coughs> the politics of the world, they don't believe in, in indigenous philosophies. Do they, brother? Some do, and more do all the time. And if you believe that there's going to be a rainbow people, then it'll slowly change. But do they believe in indigenous philosophies on a global scale? The indigenous people do on a global scale. Yeah, but who, who, holds, who holds the power? What 
about being brought up to look after the land. And they say you got no claim to the fucking land, eh? They say Trevor Ballingo, Trevor Jack, you got no claim to the land. But you're Aborigine. What does Aborigine mean in the Oxford Dictionary? From origins. Yeah. Forever. And Aborigine means indigenous, doesn't it? Yeah, original inhabitants. Yeah. That's what I was taught in school. Aboriginal means the original inhabitants of the place. I'm supposed to be Aborigine. Yet they rape in my forest. So it's not my forest, it's my heart. Which is part of my land, which is part of me. Part of my kids. My kids, kids, kids. My father's father's father. So what do you reckon should happen? Should a revolution happen? Part of me says a blood revolution and part of me says a fucking peace revolution. What the fuck peace gonna do? What the fuck peace do to the Viet Cong? What peace do to the North Koreans? American colonization? Imagine what they're gonna call Earth in the year 2010. They gonna call it America because Australia is already Americanized. Fuck America because they fucking raped the Indians, but the Indians are spiritual, so they can't fuck that. <laughs> they don't understand. Spiritually, they fuck. Even though. Communists might be a little bit better on uh, a spiritual scale, on a mentality scale. They got more to offer than capitalism. Won't their cultures outlive most of the gubbers when it comes down to it, when the cities all crumble in the end, when they choke themselves to death, there'll still be people wandering through the forest. There's still be people out in the beaches. There's still be people out in the desert. There's still be people out there and all that. There will always be people there. And so the indigenous people will in fact survive. As they always have. They always will. Slowly dying already as it is. When I was a kid, there was more rivers around in the, on the north east coast than what there is today. But there's still this one, and there's still a few others. We can save these and a few others and spread it out from there, really. We know how to bring it back. We can't save it all, but we can save parts of it. The parts that are still strong and where the local custodians still exist. Yeah. To bring it back. You gotta bring back certain stuff. You gotta bring back certain stuff, brother. And that's not allowed, no one no, no, allowed, unless you're allowed. Right. Like, we say no more. No more. Side as she bends 
I look at her and I cannot pretend Her man has never set his foot here But still, she is still beautiful There is love and acceptance here Even with the ravages that he has made In the doctor's waiting room In the supermarket shelves In the principal's office In her secret cell Look how tall or rich your mother is Look how far she can be pushed down covers her scars, see how she hides her cancers and ulcers, look child, look and understand, because on her you will depend for your survival. The roof is dissolving over our heads It's all been affected, it's all going wrong And it will affect you before too much longer There's nowhere to run, there's nowhere you can hide From the depth of the ocean to the deep blue sky It's more than just poison, it's more than just heat The ground is strangled and under our feet But there's still time to make ends meet Even with the ravages that we have made In this eroded pasture this urban sprawl in this beachfront sewer This inner city backyard in this locked up forest In this choked city air In this sterile car park In your TV chair oh, I beg of you Look at how taller and our mother is And how much further can we push and yet survive See how well she covers her scars Port Macquarie's town centre development faces a court challenge. How to get a semi-trailer out of a river and Mullumbimby gold medalist Patria Thomas comes home. Good evening also tonight. Green stage a colourful protest in the National Parks Office over Loffing and Burrabungi Forest. Aboriginal residents at Old Burnt Bridge lose funding and Coffs Harbour drought arrives in Tetterfield. Green groups have protested outside State, Office, State Forest's office at Urunga to stop logging in a compartment of the Oaks State Forest west of Barraville. The protesters claim the logging is a threat to endangered animals and the area's natural water supply. For the past few weeks, protesters in the Oaks State Forest have stopped loggers gaining access to a 45 hectare compartment. Logging resumed just over a week ago. Today they shifted the focus of their action to the forestry office at Urunga. The group claims, although the compartment has been logged twice in the past, it continues to support a number of endangered animals. They accuse state forests of failing to carry out necessary studies. They did come up and do a, a daytime survey for a nocturnal animal, which we weren't happy with. Um, we're also not happy with the fact that we weren't allowed in to check where they were going to be logging. An EIS on logging in the area is still being prepared. The protesters also claim a creek which supports 50 families is under threat. They don't accept State Forest's assurances it will not be affected. They've got no idea really of what could happen and um, if it happens to be a bad thing and the creek dries up, it leaves us basically in an unlivable position because with no water you can't live out in those sort of areas. The protest remained peaceful throughout, police simply asking demonstrators to remove the banners draped over the State Forest building. There were no arrests. State Forest dismissed the protesters as a fringe group. Uh, we've been negotiating with the protesters at this particular operation for the past six months and we've reached agreement with all the environmental groups concerned. It's just a couple of protesters now who aren't happy with that. The protesters say today's action is the only course left open to them after the state forest was declared off limits 10 days ago. They are vowing to continue the fight with more protest action in future. Phil Hind in Yurunga, Prime Local News.
the Dunghutty people of Old Burnt Bridge. I wasn't there. I've got to be careful, this one isn't just... No. We have to turn it off.